when we go through this, I don't know everything. And there's a lot of blanks that are still kind of um, not filled in. I could get some of this wrong. And if you know anything about anything I'm going to talk to about tonight, please let us know. Because this is all part of gathering the history and finding out what we're doing, how we fill in the blanks. And any information you have, you can put it in the chat session. And more likely, you're viewing this from our uh, YouTube channel. And if you see anything you know or want to participate, send us a message or make comments um, appropriately uh, for anything that you see. That being said, we'll go ahead and start. This is an overview. And I kept this kind of plain because I didn't like any of the themes we have. So, so uh, uh, go along with me. I'm, I'm going for readability here. We're going to talk about who planned Shore Acres, why the name Shore Acres, uh, the North Shore Scenic Drive, which is the heart of why um, the person who bought this and the development came in here. The North Shore Scenic Drive is a very important component to this. We had a trolley and a ferry. I got pictures of some of that. And we're going to conclude pretty much with the Shore, Acres, uh, his, the Shore Acres Historic Homes. We have a map. Kevin and I compiled a list of the homes when the actual date they were built. And there's a lot left here in the neighborhood. So we're going to cover that. The areas that I'm going to show you and how they develop are the Shore Acres Center, Mermaid's Point, Venice and Arrowhead, and Overlook. Bayou Grande, uh, Patrician Point. A lot of those places came about later. And then I know when our birth date is, and I'm going to make you wait till the end of this session in order to find out when, when that point was, oh, let me uh, maximize this, when that point was that we actually, that we actually became um, a society, a, a place where you could actually afford I'm sorry, where you could actually buy a house is the birth date. And I'm going to share that with you as we go along. I have to start here to give kudos. Obviously, there were people here before uh, we got here. And there's two tribes that were around here. Uh, forgive me if I can't pronounce this. The, the to I, I need to zoom in on this. Hang on. These two places, the to Toka Kabaga and the Calusa, they have information or they found uh, where they were mainly upon um, the uh, Mermaid's Point and they were here uh, kind of before we were. It's hard to tell this history, uh, but we should give a kudos because they were here before us. Which brings us to this, the purchase. The state of Florida owned pretty much all of Florida. And if you just look specifically to Pinellas County, it came under something called the Florida and Land Act. And what they were trying to do here is take care of a problem. The problem is they don't have any way to get inland. All they had in Pinellas County was Mermaid's Point, St. Petersburg, a couple other docks that, that sprung up, but no way to kind of get into the interior. So what they did is they did this act and they sold land in the agreement that these rich people that bought the land would provide transportation. And transportation is a key in the history of Shore Acres, as, as you guys will see. On December, uh, January 5th, 1883, it was sold to the Florida Land and Improvement Company, and it was about 10 cents an acre uh, that they sold it to. This company was a holding company, and then finally sold it to this guy, William, Dub William H. Wright. I don't know a lot about him, but what I do know, after he passed on, Nathaniel J. Upham bought the property March 24th, 1921, which if you look at that, that was just about 100 years ago from today. This is him. This is our founding father, Nathaniel J. Upham. He's from Duluth, Minnesota. He made his fortune in the bond trading, and then somewhere along the way, he decided to get into real estate. And this says something about the man right here. When he decides to get into real estate, he not only gets into real estate, he tours the country as the president of the National Realtors Association. So a man who really didn't do much real estate gets into it and all of a sudden he's a leader of the real estate people. 
That tells you a lot about the tenacity of this man. Now, why from Duluth and why St. Petersburg? Well, he had a relative, James Upham, who is part of the, the uh, Range Riders, the Teddy Roosevelt in DeSoto Park. He came back and said, St. Petersburg is this great place. Got a mirror lake. It has a dock. It, it just, it's just beautiful. So that's why he bought it. Now, why Shore Acres? Why the name Shore Acres? And we don't know, but it came from N.J. Upham. And what might have been is, in his mind is this. If you look up Shore Acres on Google, you're not going to get our quaint little neighborhood. You're going to get a place in Oregon called Shore Acres State Park. This was opened right around 1917. N.J. Upham was in Portland talking about real estate right around that time. So he would have had to heard, had to have heard, heard he had to have heard about Shore Acres State Park. And maybe he even knew the rich guy who bequeathed his old estate home to the state of Oregon to make Shore Acres. On the right hand side is a little bit more fun, I would say, of an answer. And that's this, in the 1910s, and starting in the 19 knots, right, the 1900s, there was a play. That play was called Shore Acres. It was enormously successful and popular. Think of Napoleon, or think of uh, uh, any kind of new play that we have now, Hamilton, to a lesser extent. It was part of the common shared knowledge of this play. This is it playing in the 1920s. When it became a movie, it had a 30-year run on Broadway. It toured the whole country and then finally came to a movie. Now, this movie has nothing to do with us. It seems like a sordid story to me, but it was very popular. So where Shore Acres came from, that's what would put it in the mind of, name, of N.J. Upham. Uh, it makes sense to call it Shore Acres because it's part of this. And this road is important to the whole idea of Shore Acres and how we came to be and why this little piece of land was so important to a guy that really seemed to know what he was doing, N.J. Upham. And it's this, you used to travel from Tampa to St. Pete, it would take you about seven hours by car and it was not a pleasant car ride. When Gandhi came in, he built the Gandhi Bridge it opened in November 1924. It cost 75 cents per car and then 10 cents additional passenger. It originally had a draw bid bridge at the hump, if you know where that is. And it cut travel time by six hours. So you can imagine what kind of effect this would have. The most important part of this is, is this guy called, uh, this guy named Eugene M. Elliott, who was Gandhi's right hand person. So Shore Acres, and I'm going to show you on a map here in a second, was right between a triple development. And that is Riviera, Shore Acres, and the Snail Isle Golf Course. And the three of those uh, men got together and came up with a scenic drive that would go through. Now, this is the original vision that we have. If you, if you want to take this in perspective, just think of when you go to an amusement park and you get one of those little diagrams, those little brochures they hand you. It's distorted, but it kind of shows you where everything is. This is a vision for Shore Acres. And a couple of things I want to point out here. Over, uh, let's see here. Over on the left-hand side, we see Snell Isle, but Snell Isle was basically a golf course. It was called the Coffee Pot Golf Course. The main place where you go in a golf course was not located where it is now. It was located somewhere over here, much by where the uh, um, uh, Masonic Temple is. And if we go a little bit further north, we see Shore Acres. And this was the plan. And this is pretty much how it turned out. And this is the vision that was there by N.J. Upham. When this came out, the, there were a few things that are different. One, all this was not cleared or dredged. We had the Shore Acres Center, which is the start. I'll cover that um, as we go along. 
We have Overlook. We have something called Baywood, which is um, Patrician Point now. And then this back area that wasn't really defined, but we know that they came through and did a lot of dredging for that. On Bayou Grande, this is the equivalent of 62nd Avenue now. And up here was 83rd Avenue. So Shore Acres originally consisted of Ponderosa Shores as well up here. And something else I want you to notice is um, E.M. Elliott, the Gandhi guy, he owned all of this up here. And then down here was Perry Snell. Perry Snell's interest in this was not necessarily Snell Island. If you go on 40th, which is equivalent of this, and you look all the way to the left to North, uh, the historic, historic Northeast and all the way North to 62nd, all the way down 40th Avenue to Publix, that was all Perry Snell's property. And this all here from the Gandhi Bridge, and they don't show it here, I'll show it to you in a second, all the way down to St. Petersburg was known, uh, known as the North Shore uh, of Tampa Bay and basically north of St. Petersburg and, and the shore up here. So this was all the property that they were trying to develop. If you notice, Shore Acres is, is in the middle of this. So this was the appeal of Shore Acres. That's how he came up with the name. That's when he bought it. And what we cover next is, okay, how do you sell it? And we have this. This introduces us to a few things. One is right here, the Boardman Phrase Company. This is the real estate company that did all the advertisement and handled selling of all the lots inside of Shore Acres. If you look closely here, you see this actually says Shore Acres on Tampa Bay. So this was our first bus that took people up here. Uh, we were laughing before at, it looks like it was just a Jeep and then they added on the back uh, part of this. Think of when you're going for some kind of timeshare sales pitch, this would be the kind of ride that you would have in this thing. They would take you up to Shore Acres. Now, here's the road that they went on. It seems like a kind of bumpy ride in that old jalopy, but this is the original road that went up to Mermaid Point. This is the road that eventually became Bayshore. Uh, you're looking south here because the water is on the, is on the left-hand side. So naturally they had to beautify this road as part of their whole development of the North Shore Scenic Drive, which is now Bayview. And we have the development coming along here. It's Bayview and Bio Grande Boulevard. This is uh, originally going to be a beautiful boulevard that would attract the uh, what they used to call pleasure tourists or pleasure motorists that would come up through here, not go down 4th Street, but the scenic drive around the Riviera and Shore Acres and Snell Isle and hug the uh, uh, coastline on that. Okay, can I ask a question? We improved it. Uh, if, it's, if it's quick, I, I kind of go ahead. Yeah, where did Bayou Grand start at that point? I can, I can show you that later. Okay. This is, this is where um, Bayou Grande if you look up by Arrowhead, uh, that's what I'm assuming here because it's right by the water. And this is the developing of the roads. And then they got a bit wider. And you can see here the sidewalks. And the sidewalks were important because it added a lot to it. This, I'm pretty sure, is if you go down Bayshore all the way on the south side of it, where the bridge used to be at that point, this is looking north for that. And this is the boulevard finished. And this yeah. is the Shore Acres section of this boulevard. And then finally, I have a picture of what a home might look like there, or actually what a home does look like there. Notice it has the Washingtonian palms. These, these palms will grow up to be the big tall ones and the oleanders. And then it had some uh, uh, plants over here. So this is what a home site would have looked like on Bay Shore back early, early in the day. Right. And of course, they have to conclude and get that road built. This yeah. is a picture. Uh, I'm sorry, get, getting some uh, uh, people talking here. This is original picture looking north from St. Petersburg. And they outline 
this road right here, which was the scenic, North Shore Scenic Drive, and then you hook up to Gandhi here. The whole idea was that they can bring people down on this road, they can skip through Shore Acres, and the, they take the scenic route instead of taking the 4th Street route. Um, all the time that it used to take to drive through, the extra little time of driving through the scenic route probably wouldn't be that much. So we have the uh, road, we have the idea, Shore Acres in the middle, kind of a uh, agreement between a, a, the parties there. And now we can take a look at the Shore Acres section. On the Shore Acres section, and I'll show you this, it's the only grid we have in Shore Acres. It was zoned for business. The original idea is that people will need to go shopping. People will need to um, have all their needs met and we'll have a big business district in Shore Acres. And it was only zoned business or if you're a resident buying in there, you had to have a business in there as well. It was on the highest ground. It's the only grid system that we have. And it was supposed to be the center of commerce for North Shore. Sure. So what happened here eventually, when you think about it, is 4th Street became kind of the commerce center for North Shore, if you think about it. Everybody goes to Publix and, and McDonald's and all the different businesses on 4th Street. It didn't work out. And for reasons I'll go into. If you look at a grid, this is the original map of Shore Acres that we have here on the left-hand side. Notice this road going through here used to be called Main Street or yeah, Main Street. Now that is called um, Chancellor. We have the North Shore Boulevard right here, which became Bay Shore and then hooked around Bio Grande, not the best map in the world, and then came up here. So these are the sections that we'll look at. The Shore Acres Center was supposed to be the center of uh, business. The Overlook, they're going to sell houses there and then develop this area, which is around Mermaid Point and Arrowhead, which we see right here, and develop that as well. Now, uh, getting a little bit closer in here, you can see the grid. And this is the reason why we have grid streets and straight and narrow streets. And then we have a bunch of kind of curvy streets. Um, to put you in perspective, this is what used to be called Central, which is now Shore Acres Boulevard. And this is the corner of Central and um, Chancellor right here. All right, and then we had this. And this is called El Cantano. And this is a building that was built on that corner of Shore Acres Boulevard and Chancellor. It stayed here for a long time. This is our original recreation center. This was gonna be the heart of life for Shore Acres. It provided transportation to the ferry, which I'll show you in a second, and a terminal to the trolley that got dropped off here. It had, I can see a few offices, one of the, the uh, uh, Boardman Phrase Company, and also some other people that bought larger chunks of land here and were trying to sell them. Another th interesting thing about this, and this is kind of getting to Shore Acre Civic Association. If you read on the right there, it says that we put on a dance, a New Year's dance, New Year's Eve dance. And I'll go ahead and focus in here. Uh, it says that we were, here we go, Shore Acre Civic Association formed a few weeks ago. This was from 3 1 1925. So I'm sorry, this is from New Year's Eve, 1926. So we were pretty much created uh, right around December 15th, uh, 2026. Here's we put on another dance for New Year's uh, there. And here's what I don't know that maybe people can help. I don't know what happened to this building. I don't know when it was built. And I don't know what corner of Shore Acres and Chancellor this actually existed on. So hopefully in the future, we can find out. In particular, what happened to that building? I have a feeling that won't be too hard. Here's the problem. Here is the situation, right? Shore Acres, and I'm gonna show you some photographs that might be a little disappointing coming up. Shore Acres and a lot of the land in Florida really wasn't meant to build on it first. It was meant to make money. You buy a lot, and then you sell it for a humongous profit, just like you always have in 1923 in Shore Acres. 
And what I want to show here is at the top, it says $500 reward for those who know. And you can go through this document. I'm going to publish all the uh, PowerPoint documents. And this will tell you a lot about Shore Acres. And do you know this? Great thing about Shore Acres, you know that. You can see here, it's all this do you know. But then how you make your 500 bucks is you will buy it once a $500 lot and make $500 profit, we believe, in one year. That will be your $500 reward. It's kind of funny. It's kind of shady. But it shows you why they were selling property at first. It was all speculation. It was all buying a home site on your tour to Florida and then hoping you make a lot of money in the next year or so. But here's what happened. This is one year later, uh, a little less than one year, a little more than one year later. And what happened is nobody built homes. And other developments around this area started building homes. Why? Because people want to be around people. People, believe it or not, are attractive as far as selling real estate goes. Nobody is going to want to move to a place that doesn't have other people in it. So, at, so one year later, they saw the problem. And also you have economies of scale. It wasn't easy to get all the materials to build a house back in the day. So if they could build 50 houses, they're gonna save $100,000. So what happened with the Shore Acres Center is they, are, they figured, okay, we have the roads, we have the water and electric hooked up already. Let's rezone this residential just to try to get people to build here because they saw there was a problem. This is in 1924. There were a few houses built and this covers Shore Acres Center. And <coughs> I put a dot on the houses that are still left. I don't have the addresses or photos of the front of the houses, but these are the historic houses left in Shore Acres Center. All of them built before 1930 and they're still around. I would imagine a lot of these houses, because um, there weren't that many houses built, a lot of the, the houses that we have recorded are still here. That brings us to Mermaid's Point, and I'll show you this on a map in case somebody hasn't been there. Here's what I want to communicate about Mermaid's Point. It was here long before Shore Acres was here. It was a natural jettison out to the bay that was sand covered and was a popular attraction for boaters for a long time. The original road, and you could call that Bay Shore that went out there, originally was to just drive out there and have a picnic. It had a fishing village, and I'd love to learn about this fishing village for years and years and years. Uh, before Shore Acres and during Shore Acres. So you could rent a boat there. You could go to the little fish market there. It was a picnic area and they had a ferry dock and transport to the trolley. Just to put this where, uh, where this is in case you don't know, if you're looking up here and this is a terrible map, but this is the ferry dock and this actually jets out and it did at that time as well. If you look now where it is, it's this little point up here. And the ferry came in, we think, right around this point where the tiny bridge is. But Mermaid's Point had been there for a very, very long time. And here we go. Here's a picture of some boaters or some uh, people having fun out at Mermaid Point in 1923 and 24. If I zoom in here, a couple of things are interesting. One is you see Duluth right here. And this guy here, I'm going, that is NJ Upham, who had a, I don't know why they wore suits at the beach during Florida, but they all look like they're, they're uh, uh, perspiring there a little bit. And why I think that's NJ, and this can probably get um, uh, verified, if I put his picture in there and then zoom in again, that really <laughs> looks like him. Same haircut, it makes sense that he was there. So there he is at Mermaid Beach, having a good time, even took his hat off for the picture, and we'll identify all these people. I have a feeling those are his sons uh, right there who took over a lot of the, the business that we had here. Here is one of everybody frolicking with their swimming suits, and that is at Mermaid Point as well. So Mermaid Point has been there for a long time. The ferry that came in here, uh, a lot of people didn't know about this ferry. 
But you can see we have a schedule. It opened on 12-1-1923. It went over to a place called Port of, uh, I'm sorry, Tampa Point, and then went around the bend again to downtown Tampa. It had a few stops along the ways. Um, the original ferry called the Florida, I even have the captain's name there, carried 100 passengers, but they would have to be really crammed in, I would think. And you had a shuttle to downtown St. Petersburg. And eventually, uh, you could basically walk to the Shore Acres Center or El Canto and then take the trolley into downtown St. Pete if you'd like to. I don't know what happened to the ferry. I don't have pictures of it. However, this is what ferries looked like back then that were running in Tampa Bay. Uh, the same design, and it very likely looked like this ferry that came back and forth and ended up at Mermaid Point. Here's another one that went from St. Petersburg to Bradenton, and it undoubtedly looked like this. You can see even the cars are quite the uh, right thing. I'm not sure what happened to the ferry when it stopped service, but I imagine once they built the roads, um, it just didn't do enough business to keep on, but we'll find out. That brings us to the Venice and Arrowhead section. And the Venice and Arrowhead section, here's the thing about Venice. Uh, it wasn't there to begin with, and this was a huge expense. The idea was to connect the lakes by dredging the canals between the lakes. And here is uh, a part of that. I'm gonna uh, to go into the dredging here in a second. The route from Coffee Pot Bayou to Pappy's Bayou could be shortcut. I'll show that on the map. And the advertisements all said you could have a home, it'll be just like Venice, and you can have a garage and boathouse in the same thing, in the same uh, uh, building, which I guess was a, a pretty big selling point. And talking about the dredging, we cannot talk about the history of Shore Acres unless you talk about dredging. If you look at a map of Shore Acres, this is not nature built. Uh, this is a part of our history. And this was a big plus to Shore Acres because they had all this equipment left over from the Gandhi Bridge that they could just bring down here. We did not get to look like this without dredging. So, so this is basically what happened when they were dredging. I'm gonna take a closer look at this. And this is looking south. This is Mermaid Point over here. This is Arrowhead as it's becoming developed. And then you have these lakes down here. The idea was to dredge through here, connect these lakes, and then you could have a canal and something lining it with a connection over here to Coffee Pot Bayou. And this is Pappy's Bayou over here. So you could connect those two areas through this. So they basically went through here and dredged all the way over to these different lakes and then dredged some in here. And the fill that they used from the dredge basically built the roads and um, made things, uh, you know, not flood as much, let's just say. But talking about the flooding, uh, I'm sure you guys will all enjoy this living in Shore Acres. Sea levels are now, sea levels are now and as filled one to two feet above higher than the city seawalls. And right there, Shore Acres will have perfect drainage. So everybody figured this out in 1926, and we don't have any flooding problems to this day. All right, here's the dredge, and here's how they did it. I always wondered how the, the whole dredging works. Well, first they went through, and this is the, the Nokamas, which was a huge outfit. And this is what dug a little ch channel, a little canal, a little ditch, if you will, and then lined it with an eight-foot wall. And then after that, this guy came through the buck, buckuous and took out all the material that was between the walls. And that's how uh, they dredged it. That has, that's how they dredged the canals all the way through. And then we see them today as, as we see right here. Those are the canals that were dug. I don't know if these seawalls have been replaced. Uh, they probably have been replaced by then. But the original idea of this part of our neighborhood was called Venice and you can see why, because everybody's lined on the, the uh, water. You have a route from Coffee Pot Bayou all the way up to Pappy's Bayou. And the idea was you would sell houses around this lake and these canals and it would be just like Venice. 
that wasn't by accident. That was, of course, planned on the original um, uh, uh, idea for Shore Acres is having this place. And if you look at it now, it's not far from where we went, uh, the whole Venice concept. Now we'll take a look at Overlook. Now, Overlook, they weren't selling a lot of property and NJ Upham sold basically Overlook. I'll show you, this is the Southern part of Shore Acres. And all I can get in the owner is somebody called the Philadelphia Syndicate. It sounds a little shady to me. It's probably people that you don't wanna make mad, but they paid $500,000 for Overlook. They agreed to develop the lots in Overlook. And the agreement was also that they would build a concrete bridge with Perry Snell in order to provide access right into Overlook. And Overlook is right here. It's the kind of V section of Shore Acres. And Overlook is basically this part right here. If I take it on more modern map, Overlook is this section that's right here. And these people from Pennsylvania, and uh, they had a Pennsylvania Avenue up there too, um, are the ones that developed Overlook. They did it in two phases and they really advertised a lot. I'm gonna show you an aerial map coming up and they did a wonderful job with this, of, of creating this. It was sold in two packages, basically one and two. And if you, again, if you wanna take a look at these PowerPoints, they are made available if you wanna take a look at um, a little more detail. This is a house and just to give you perspective, this is on Minnesota. It's on the market for $23,000. Where it is, I don't know, I don't recognize this house. I have a feeling it's not here anymore, but this gives you an idea of what they were selling along Overlook and the houses they provide, the kind of house they provided and a little bit about the neighborhood. Now, the bridge, the Snell Isle Bridge, the concrete bridge that we see there now was there to basically handle real traffic unlike the old bridge did. The old bridge, if you can, if we can uh, uh, zoom in here, the old bridge used to be right here. And that's why Bayshore, we have this kind of mix up when you right come over the uh, uh, Snell Isle Bridge. It is kind of a funny intersection here and why does it loop around and suddenly uh, drop off? That's because the original bridge, which is called the Smacks Bayou Bridge, which is a great name for a bridge. Um, I wish they would have uh, kept the Smacks Bayou Bridge, would, be, would have been right here. For reasons I don't know, um, they decided to move it a little bit northwest over to the new location that we have here. And this is a picture that tells a lot. And we're going to spend a little bit of time with this picture. I can tell that it's after 1926 because we see the new bridge being uh, that is built here. We see Overlook that is already developed right here. And you can see it looks lovely. They have plants lining the streets. If you go up here where the bridge is and you take a left, that's gonna get you Shore Acres Boulevard right in here. Also notice that this, it has a seawall on it, but this part doesn't. Also notice that the houses are set way back. They're set up, up around here and we can see a house peeking through right here. And by the way, this house is still in Shore Acres. Um, it's on uh, uh, Shore Acres Boulevard right now. And eventually they came in with a wall and built it right around here. A couple other things to notice, um, no houses. And this continued to be a problem. I'd like to report that, oh, hey, uh, you know, Shore Acres, they designed it, people came, they bought their plots of land, uh, they put their houses in, but this was a continuous problem. I'll also point out, this is, this is Bayshore. And notice how beautiful it is. They have the Australian pines on the outside, some other oleanders, and then the Washingtonian palms right here. And this is pretty much where it ended off, right up here. But this is the original boulevard that they were beautifying before. And again, notice no homes. This up here would be the Shore Acres Center. If you want reference, 
Um, right around this area is going to be the LCC school and our Islander Market. So if you took way back then Islander Market, you would come down here, you take left on Overlook, which is now connected to the bridge, and then uh, proceed on. And again, what's noticeable about this, to me, is the lack of houses. This is 1927, 1928. People just bought the land, land basically to make money off it later. And this is a great picture because it shows kind of how it was developed, how they did okay selling the plots of land, but nobody's gonna to wanna to move out here and just live by themselves. They're gonna to wanna to move probably to Northeast Park, to uh, places between 4th and 9th where more people are. So that was a real problem that they had with Overlook. These are historical homes in Overlook that are still left. This is the oldest house in Shore Acres. It was built in 1920, predates uh, Shore Acres. And this house is the one that I pointed out before that is still there. Okay, the trolley. The trolley was created, and I need to show where it is and what Snell's um, uh, interest in this was. Remember, all this land here was Snell. All the one from, to give you a, a perspective here, from pretty much 62nd all the way down to Old, Old Northeast was Perry Snell. Here we have the Masonic home, which was also kind of the entrance to the golf course that was, uh, he sees Snell's coffee pot golf course. And the um, trolley line used to end here. And that was the terminal station. <laughs> so what they did is they built it up here, which is now 40th Street, all the way over. And that's what Snell built. And then Upham was responsible to, for putting it in here and went up and then met at the corner of Center and Main or Shurikas Boulevard and Chancellor. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's where it terminated. And then it's close walk to the ferry dock. Here is the grand opening of it. And we see our man right there, NJ Upham, handing off, I get, or, or shaking the hand. A uh, couple of these people are the mayor, et cetera. And this is the line. This is a photo taken from the Masonic Temple before they went on their ride of the new trolley into Shore Acres. And the comments on the newspaper article here were basically, wow, there is nothing between Masonic Temple and Shore Acres. So you went through uh, a couple miles down 40th Avenue when nothing was there. It's the first extension in 10 years for St. Petersburg. So it was kind of a celebration to have on there. And as a side note, inside of our little Shore Acres Center, the building that you saw, they had a party. They had the YMCA band there. And uh, all this happened at the Shore Acres Center. This is the mayor right here of St. Petersburg at the time smiling and operating or driving the car <coughs> into Shore Acres. So that's the trolley. We have a better picture of this and a little schedule change because there were obviously people here. The children needed to go to school. There wasn't any school on Shore Acres. So you can see the Shore Acres Center here. You can see a trolley car going to that Shore Acres and then a bunch of kids all happy uh, going to school. You can see they have their little, their little uh, hats on as well. I would love to find out if this is a real school or just, um, you know, an artist rendering of it. But the trolley was a very big source of uh, transportation into Shore Acres. Now we go to 1927 to 1930. And something, excuse me, I need to clear my throat. <coughs> and something pretty important happened in 1927. If you're unfamiliar with this, the entire bottom fell out of the housing market. So no houses are gonna be built here. I doubt anybody's gonna be buying properties. Everything's being auctioned off. These are all from 1928. So it pretty much, the concept of Shore Acres was alive and well. The uh, zoning was all put in, however, um, people bought the property, but they didn't build homes here. And then, <clears throat> then the uh, bottom fell out of the market 
and there wasn't much they could do besides auction off the homes. This, this was, um, a lot of people say the Great Depression started in Florida, and this was a part of it. So many people lost money with this. So what do you do if you have a bunch of property, uh, you build a golf course, and this is the golf course of Shore Acres. <coughs> Excuse me, I need to take a break, get some water. Okay, this was the golf course of Shore Acres. And to put this in perspective, this would be where Shore Acres Boulevard kind of takes a right. And if you look down here, this is basically Placido Bayou now. This would be the, the, the they kind of cut across instead of 40th, 40th Street coming straight. They kind of, uh, angled this, and this is the old trolley line. And this is a golf course built in 1921 to kind of answer for, okay, there's not that many homes here. What are we doing? And by the way, these two homes are still here. That's on uh, Alabama, uh, 4001 and 4009 Alabama. These homes are still here and they've been there for a long time. But you can also see out here in the distance, this would be the Shore Acres Center. And this would be the, the Ponderosa Shores, and they built this um, uh, golf course. Now, the scenic homes, and maybe this is something people can kind of help out with, is we have a list of when the homes were built and by the actual date that they were built. So this is a map of all the homes that were here during this uh, range that we're talking about, 1923 to 1930. There weren't that many homes here, as we've noted. So I imagine a lot of these are left. So I'm gonna post these historical pictures and maybe you recognize a few of these homes. And I think chances are really good that these homes are still here. And we have some pictures of some more homes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that were here, and this has the owners of them. All the owners of these homes uh, seem pretty prosperous. Um, uh, and again, we have the names of the homes, or the names of the original owners, but it would be nice to contact the owner or the present occupant of some of these homes and find out, um, you know, the history of these different homes that we have here. And I'm going to conclude with this. Our birthday, and our birthday really is when you could buy property in Shore Acres. Um, the, the Shore Acres Civic Association agreed to that. And I've gotten this from these two different articles. The one on the left is from March 4th, 1923, a full Sunday ad, a full page ad. And the other one is from 311-1923. Well, in this one, oh, here we go. In this one, they mentioned that property will go on sale next week. And on this, okay, I need to stop doing that. And on the one to the right, they say that property went on sale seven days ago. It stated the 11th. So I think you can do the map. Our birthday is March 7th, 1923, which means we have our 100th anniversary coming up. And I would hope that we have a giant party in order to celebrate this. Not every neighborhood knows when they were created. Not every neighborhood shares this with us to where you know that it was all planned out. It was conceived from 62nd Avenue all the way down to the bridge that takes you to Snell Isle. Everything was pretty much conceived that you can see uh, that we have here. <clears throat> 